Hey guys, today's video is a get ready with me while I talk about some issues I've seen in the fashion blogging Instagram community. Talking about some issues I'm sure you've seen on Instagram slash YouTube. So it's a get ready with me for this look that I've been doing pretty much every time I wear makeup. I was kind of out of the eyeshadow phase for a while and now I'm back in the game. I'm into matte eyeshadows recently. I feel like they're really appropriate for the winter. I use pretty much the products I use all the time, but they'll all be linked down below because I don't explicitly say what I'm using because I was busy roasting things or people. I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you want to see how I got this look and who I roasted, let's just keep on going. I'm sorry. I feel really bad talking about people, but it had to be done. It just had to. Okay, so to start off, we're starting with an informative tip that I just read on the internet two minutes ago. So I just got a shower and I applied a moisturizer and I read online that now is the best time to apply perfume because it will last the longest. To go along with that, today's video is sponsored by Scentbird and Scentbird is basically a perfume subscription service where you can pay $15 a month and you get a perfume sample and I don't even want to call it a sample because I feel like this is like a travel size almost. You get a lot of perfume in here. So anyways, you get 120 to 140 sprays of perfume in here and it's $15 a month. I honestly don't think I'd use all of this in a month even if I use it every single day. It's a great gift idea for a birthday and they even have cologne which I think is great for guys because I know Jesse at least does not wear cologne every day, like maybe he wears it once a month, um, once a month, once a week or something. So this would last him forever. And perfume and cologne does go bad. So this would be a great idea for a little gift or for yourself if you're like me and you like perfume, but you're not trying to spend like $100 on a bottle that you'll never use. This is a great idea. They have over 450 cents. They have like Tom Ford and Gucci and really expensive ones that I personally would never buy the full thing. Scentbird gives you the best option to try and you get a decent amount. So I have three. The first one is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. This one is Prada Candy, which is such a classic here on YouTube. I feel like in 2010, this was like poppin'. Maybe it was a little later than that, but I love the smell. This is my personal favorite. I wear it a lot. I wear it pretty much like every time I put perfume on, which isn't every day, but a decent amount. And then the last one is Burberry Brit, Burberry Brit Sheer. And this is more of like a light fragrance. And they come in the cutest little packaging. This is perfect for your purse because it's not just going to start spraying or leaking out all over the place. So if you guys want to try out Scentbird, you can click the link down below and use my code and you'll get 30% off your first month of Scentbird, which equates to about $10, which is a great deal. I'm going to do Prada Candy. I also read some stuff online that you, oops, you spray the perfume and go like that, but you don't rub it together on the neck. I always put it in my hair. And it's said online that you should put it in your hair too and on your clothes because it'll last longer in your clothes and your hair. I don't know the science behind it, guys, but that's what the internet said. So that's where I sprayed it. And now we're going to move on to makeup because that's pretty much the extent of what I do for my body when I'm getting ready. Always got to use my Too Faced Hangover Primer because my face is super dry. I planned on vlogging today, but... I had to bring my car in to get serviced. I needed to get an oil change, an inspection. I need new brakes. I need new rotors. I need pretty much anything you could imagine getting replaced, I need replaced. So it turns out they're gonna have my car for a full day. I won't get it back until tomorrow. So it would be kind of a boring vlog. And now let's talk some trash, guys. Let's just, what's the hot gossip? Since you guys can't reply, I'll tell you what the hot gossip is. You know what I'm sick of seeing on Instagram? And I just, not that I just noticed it recently, but it's becoming more of a problem the past four months or so, I want to say. What is going on in the fashion blogger world? What is going on? Something terrible has happened to all the fashion bloggers, and I think that they've been replaced by robots. And I have a good reason. Because... They all post the exact same thing. 
uh, like literally every picture they all post is exactly the same. I swear around Christmas time, I saw probably 10, close to 10 pictures of girls standing either in a Christmas tree farm or in front of their front door holding a wreath, a Christmas wreath around their arm. Why? Why you ask? I don't know. And then I saw about mm, close to a hundred pictures of those hats with the big pom-pom on top. Not that I dislike those. I don't. I do think they're very cute. But it's just that I don't know who like the top blogger is. But whenever that blogger posts something, the rest of them like hustle the to Nordstrom, Target, Revolve.com. And they buy that and they post pretty much the exact same picture the top blogger posted. And now there's different tiers of the blogger world or different sections. You have, um, you have the Revolve vloggers who go on the Revolve trips. I'm very jealous of them. I want to be a Revolve vlogger so bad, so I'm not trashing them. I want to be them. And then you have the Nordstrom vloggers who solely post about Nordstrom sales. Pretty much their lives revolve around Nordstrom sales. And I'm not dogging them because they make so much money from that stuff. And I shop the Nordstrom sales too. Not like they do. I don't have that much money. But you have those bloggers. And then you have like the high fashion, not high fashion bloggers, but like luxury bloggers such as Ariel Charnas slash something navy. And then you have the London, you know, UK bloggers like in the fro, Lydia Millen. And those are just about those tiers. Oh, wait, we got one more tier. We have the Target bloggers who go to Target to take photos of themselves in the aisles. That is a truly heinous section of the blogging community. The things those bloggers do, I I want, I aspire to have that level of self-confidence because they are posted up in Target, in the Christmas decor aisle, in the dollar spot, having a full blown photo shoot with their Canon T6i, their Canon 80D, their husband, boyfriend, fiance, holding that thing up with a portable effing ring light behind him. And they are, they're doing it. They're doing the damn thing. Okay. And I don't know if they are reusing Starbucks cups or if they, you know, they buy one Starbucks drink a day or what, what the deal is, but those girls could be holding Starbucks together. They could be the only reason Starbucks is still open, but I, I'm not roasting them because what they do is very amazing. I mean, companies don't go, well, they do, obviously, they're still commercials, but if you think about it, think about this. You don't see commercials for makeup or for whatever you're seeing on Instagram that's sponsored or on YouTube, you don't see commercials for that stuff because companies go to influencers now and the influencers are, you know, posting their pictures in Target or on the sidewalk or in front of someone else's house that's not even their own. I'm like, is that breaking a law? I don't think you should be taking pictures in front of someone else's house, but whatever. And they're making bank from it. So we got to applaud them. We have to applaud them because they're doing God's work. Gotta love them. You gotta love them. The photo shoots that do kill me the most are, which I also applaud them for, when they're shooting pictures for like the spring in February in New York City and it's like negative four degrees. They're trotting around in like a mini skirt with a tank top and a cardigan and open toe shoes. Meanwhile, it's negative four degrees out so that they have that picture to post when Nordstrom puts that tank top on sale in one week, girl. They have their picture to post March 1st, honey. And I love them for that. So here's to all the fashion bloggers out there because I don't have that sort of ambition. I have tried so many times to be an Instagrammer, an Instagram model, a fashion blogger. But first of all, I hate taking pictures of myself. I really feel I'm very unphotogenic. I cringe at the sight of pictures of me. Now there's a side to YouTube that I can't watch. And I have, you know, told YouTube, you know how you can click on it and be like, don't recommend this to me again, or like, show me less of this. I've done that. 
to these videos and it's the Emma Chamberlain knockoffs. It's like people, not that she started this, you know, quirky, depressed, I don't know why being depressed is a trend, but it is. Um, I don't know, yeah, I don't really get it. But all the girls who are around 17-ish and they're posting these videos and the background music is like Wii music. Remember Wii from back in the day? RIP that no one uses it anymore because that was the only way we got our exercise back in the day, but they had that music in the background and it's just so cringy. It's so effing cringy. And for, at one point in time, these were like the only videos that would show up on my timeline or on my feed because I was like watching Emma Chamberlain on repeat. So YouTube thought I was a 13 year old girl and started recommending me all these videos. And I was like, where am I? That's when I found out I was old, honestly, when I was reading the jokes in the comments and I'm like, I, I don't think that's English. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Back in my day, we all just tried to be Juicy Star 07, aka Blair Fowler. That's who we copied and most of us failed. We have to put bronzer on because I look terrible. Who should I roast next? I don't know. I think that was everyone. I think that's everyone that was killing me this week on Instagram slash YouTube. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. I've been scrolling the gram a lot because I haven't had anything to do. Well, I have. I've just been not doing it in true Grace fashion. But yeah, those were just some things I saw recently that really grinded my gears. Oh, there's another group of bloggers that we can talk about. A very specific group, okay? Very specific. Mormon slash LDS, I think it's the same thing, not sure though, bloggers, fashion bloggers, who live in Utah. There's so many. I think that there's like a college in Utah that these women are going to, to become fashion bloggers. And I'm not knocking or any religions here, but I'm pretty sure I read online that it's like a Mormon thing. It's like encouraged in the religion community of their following. I don't know what I'm saying, but it's encouraged that they like keep a journal. So I think what what's going on in Utah is that by keeping a journal, they've all decided to start a blog and they all have suspicious amounts of money. A lot of it. I'm talking a lot of money because their outfits are all from Nordstrom all from Nordstrom obviously I mean where else would they be from but all from Nordstrom which if you get a full outfit from Nordstrom that's not from the BP section even if it is from the BP section like you're probably looking at $500 if we're including the shoes if we're including the purse you're looking at a thousand and again I'm not dogging them because they're making the big ones they're making the big bucks and I am jealous if you're a Mormon blogger please comment your Instagram below so we'll all give it a follow you know what? Screw it. If you have an Instagram and you want to catch a follow, put it in the comments. Give yourself a shout out in the comments. That's fine. I won't mark the comments as spam. Promise. So if you guys want to grow your Instagram following, feel free to comment that. I think what this mainly is coming down to is that Instagram in the past, I don't know, I feel like it really is just the past six months specifically has become very, that eyebrow, whoa. Good thing I'm not going anywhere today. Instagram has become very generic. Everything is the same. Everyone posts the same thing. And it's kind of boring. Like I went on, I went on an unfollow spree the other day and it, this is gonna be included in like my how to make your new year's resolutions stick video. But I went on an unfollow spree just because I had so many accounts that I was following that either like kind of annoyed me in a way or I just wasn't interested in anymore or just unactive accounts, inactive accounts is the proper verbiage there. But I unfollowed so many people and when I did, I noticed the people I was still following, which were mainly fashion bloggers because that's who I follow on Instagram. All the pictures were the same, all of them. Another picture on Instagram I see, and I've tried to create this photo, guys, but it doesn't work because I think I'm too tall. First of all, they all drive a Mercedes. So imagine me in my Mercedes. This is my, I'm, the, I'm in the driver's seat. This is the steering wheel. They're sitting like this in the steering wheel, holding their Starbucks 
with like 8,000 bracelets on and a Louis Vuitton Neverfull or something more expensive and they're taking the air shot and the lighting is immaculate. The lighting is like they're in a freaking studio. What is going on? How are they fitting in that seat? Because I have tried to take that picture so many times, girls, so many times. And I can't, and I, I don't fit in the seat. The lighting is freaking awful. Maybe it's because I have a black interior. Maybe it's because I don't have a Mercedes. But all I'm saying is that the bloggers are going to a secret school that's teaching them how to do these things. That's my conspiracy. Comment below if you agree because things are getting out of hand on Instagram. But that's really all I have for that section of my rant. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't want, I don't want the comments. You're so negative. You're, you're just, I am jealous. Yeah, you're right. I am jealous. I wish I could do that, but I don't have, first of all, the photography skills. Second of all, I'm not photogenic. I don't have the patience. Jesse is not ever home to take pictures of me. And he'd probably go insane if I forced him to take all those pictures for sure. I'm just saying there's something that we don't know about as Instagram users instead of Instagram workers. There, there is something going on. I don't know it yet, but when I find out, there will be a follow-up video. I got a hot lip gloss on today. I'm usually a lipstick or a liquid lipstick kind of gal, but I am just so not moisturized right now. Even though I moisturize, my face is like, whoa. So to end this video on a positive note, I'm gonna shout out Three accounts I have been loving that I may have not mentioned before. I'm not going to mention the people I mention in every video who probably think I'm a stalker at this point. First and foremost, Georgie Stevenson. Georgie? Georgie Stevens? Georgie Stevenson? I'll have her linked below, but she lives in Australia. She does like fitness and health and healthy living videos. Most recently, like a uh, how to stick to your New Year's resolutions video, which I love. I just leave her videos feeling so inspired to be healthy, to work out, to just be a healthier person in general. So I really love her videos. Next is an Instagram account, and this is Amber Lancaster 007. She's a fashion beauty blogger. She's also an interior designer, I believe. But what I love about her Instagram is that it's not the exact same as all the other ones that I was just talking about. She does, you know, she, she does wear some of the things that I was talking about, but 90% of her pictures are very original. So the last one is a fashion blogger as well on Instagram. Her name is Macy Stuckey. I believe that's how you say it. And this is her account. She's super tall, which I love. I love finding fashion bloggers and Instagrammers who are tall, like just around my height, I'm 5'9", so if they're from 5'8 to like 5'11", I love that. Her style is super, super, super cute and very minimalistic and just all the stuff she wears is just adorable. A lot of neutrals, which I like because you guys know I wear a lot of neutrals. I just, I love her account, so I think she deserves a good shout out too because she's remained unique throughout this holiday season, which apparently was hard to do. So that concludes my get ready with me slash roast slash rant slash shout out video. If you guys like this video, let me know down below if you want something similar to it. Thumbs up if you did. Make sure you leave your Instagram, your YouTube, your blog, whatever. We're doing shout outs today. It's shout out Friday. I think that's when this video is going up. Maybe Saturday. Shout out Saturday. And that's it. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.